343 Industries had launched their Halo Infinite multiplayer test flight the past two weekends. I got a chance to be able to play it. And well, you know what? They also announced some amazing accessibility that's gonna be in it. So what did I think? Let's find out. Grapple shot acquired. Hell yeah, grapple shot, baby. <laughs> Bitches! Yeah! Whoa! <laughs> uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Didn't know how to get out. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that little clip that I threw in there in the intro just to, for fun because it was it was kind of a fun moment for me. Anyway, before I begin this video, I want to make sure to encourage you to hit the subscribe button. I do a lot of these accessibility reviews, impressions and previews and a bunch of other fun stuff. And it really helped me out if you actually be able to hit the subscribe button so you can see more of my videos. Thank you so much in advance. Hi, I'm Steve, I'm blind, and if you're wondering how I'm able to play video games if I'm blind, if you take a look at the video here and the video's not there, click the link in the description down below to see exactly what I see when I'm playing video games. So yes, Halo Infinite had their multiplayer test flight the past two weekends. I got to try it for the first time, and here's my accessibility impressions of this. The TLDR of it is honestly, I had an absolute blast these past two weekends jumping in not only did i get a chance to sort of just play solo on myself with but also the social uh sort of bot or social arena including some of the even this the social bot arena but also the big team battle that they they had this past weekend i got to sort of jump into pretty much everything including actually some fun uh, uh matchups that i was able to jump into with the kind of funny crew on friday where we were able to jump into big team battle and just basically just have an absolute blast with that. I had so much fun and part of it is due to the accessibility that is in this game. I won't be able to touch on everything that the game has. However, uh, Xbox actually just had their accessibility showcase and in it, they 343 announced that the, uh, the accessibility that will be in this game. So you, I will encourage you to be able to check that out. I'll see if I can find a link to the all the all the options that will be available and link them in the description down below or at least what was announced anyway. Um, but because the accessibility was in the game and in the, uh, the test flight and I had some hands on experience, I'm going to talk about that today. So will this solve a lot of uh, issues that players can have when it comes to multiplayer games? And I will say yes and no. There are actually a lot that's in here that I was really impressed with and kind of alleviates the concerns I had last year when they announced so the game or when they showed the gameplay for the first time and there was some stuff in there that I was really really concerned about basically being like the, the the font size was a little too small. Well, they fixed that in this. You can actually be able to increase the font size to a very large size, but then also they added in a narrator or what they call let the game speak to me uh, option, which essentially will not only read the menus, uh, but it will read any sort of text de description, including actually some of the elements in the HUD. Which is so great to be able to see and like in that way or actually here technically and like the fact that i can sort of like concentrate on just the gameplay and not have to worry about what is in the hud elements that i can and can't see uh now there are definitely some things that actually are, are really kind of neat how they were able to add in there some of the things i enjoyed was the ability to be able to change the uh the hud highlight color of the enemies and also my team you fire team ui what's great is that you can actually be able to adjust the colors of those to a multiple amount of colors. So even if you're like if you're colorblind or even not colorblind, you can adjust it that works best for you. What's cool is actually when you shoot an enemy, depending on where you're shooting the enemy, it actually will highlight in, in that highlight color where you're shooting them. So whether you're shooting them in the elbow, the chest, the body, the legs, the head, whatever. And what's really cool is that there actually not only is a little like flash of, uh, of the full color if you drop down their shields, but there's a little sound effect that 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 sort of plays lets you know that you've basically taken down their shields and then if you keep shooting at them then there's a little kind of like really satisfying sound effect that kind of has like a little bit of like a like a impact hit but also a little bit kind of like a little ding kind of thing i don't know how to describe it i'll just play it so you can be able to hear it 
is. That, that, that's just so satisfying to me. And it just, it works. It like, and it's able for me to be able to actually be able to see what it is I am aiming at when it comes to uh, when, it, when it comes to trying to be able to take down an enemy before they take me down. The other things you can be able to do is you can remap all the controls, whether you're on uh, mouse or keyboard or on controller. I was playing this on the Series X, so I didn't have a chance to just sort of try it out with mouse, mouse and keyboard. However, on the PC version, I have heard and it has been confirmed that essentially you can be able to have multiple controls for, uh, for different devices. So what that means is that you can be able to play with your mouse and the controller at the same time. And in some cases, you can actually be able to use different types of controllers. Uh, there's one particular story where Tim Geddes from Kind of Funny has been playing with a PS3 Move controller in one hand and his mouse in the other, and he was able to get that to work. And honestly, the potential for multiple different devices, whether it's the adaptive controller or a bunch of different buttons and switches that can help those with motor disabilities. This is the possibilities are endless with this, and I'm really glad to be able to see that uh, in this in this game. Um, other things that actually was really cool that I saw that I hadn't seen in a game before was the idea of a linear navigation, uh, where essentially if you turn it on, you can be able to use the thumbstick to basically navigate throughout the entire uh, menu system. You use the up uh, use up and down on the thumbstick to navigate the different sections of the menu on the left thumbstick go left and right to be able to navigate the individual menus themselves this is actually a really cool idea. It took a little bit for me to be able to figure out how it actually worked, because there was no sort of like the thing in the description that tells exactly how it works. But once you figure it out, it's honestly a really kind of interesting way to be able to navigate the menu system. And honestly, this will be able to help out not only those with motor disabilities, but it will actually actually help out those with blind and low vision, because with obviously with the game speaking to you and that linear navigation, it can honestly make it a lot easier for a player to be able to navigate the menus uh, quickly, more efficiently, and with less sort of barriers in the way. There's some actually some little quality of life things in there that just actually make this mwah, like chef's kiss uh, that I love to be able to see uh, experiment a little bit even further. Um, one of which is actually the magnification uh, on the scope. Um, you know how when you're using a rifle and you're using a scope that the, your, uh, your sensitivity and your sort of aiming is just all over the place because obviously it's zooming in to part the screen and so when you're aiming your little slight movement can basically move you all the way across the screen well in halo infinite you can actually be able to adjust the sensitivity of each individual scope zoom scale everything from 1.4 on a rifle to a 10 times scale in a with a sniper and it's a like it's that little tiny little improvement actually can make this like all the difference Okay, okay, there's one, th there's also another little thing. Okay, I, I, I gotta talk about this. It's, it's, it's something that, you know what, is probably not even built with accessibility of mine, but I'm gonna claim it as such anyway. So there's these, whenever you sprint, there's these, <laughs> there's these little like speed lines that kind of zoom past you as you sprint. And it, not only is that kind of like a cool effect, which you can actually be able to turn on or off in the game, but if you leave it on, it's kind of a neat little accessibility thing to let the player know, hey, you're sprinting right now. And that actually could be just a small little thing that in the heat of the moment, you may not even re like realize that you're sprinting. So having that there is really, really cool. Another little fun little update in here that honestly is such a small quality of life update, but is so powerful for me specifically. I can't tell you how many times in multiplayer games I've confused my own squad mates with enemies and I would start shooting at them. I always be able to make sure whenever I'm in a multiplayer game that no friendly fire is on because there are many times that that'll actually happen. In Halo Infinite, what's really cool is that you can actually be able to see your squad mates' names and a little highlight around their character at any given moment in a multiplayer match. So to me, that helps me be able to know at a quick glance, okay, that's my teammate, but over there, the person that doesn't have a name or doesn't have a highlight around them, that's a bad guy. I need to shoot that guy instead of that guy. And it just, it helps so much and it kind of allows you to make that really quick decisions that in multiplayer you have to be able to make in order for you to be able to be able to succeed and be able to take down uh, any enemies that are around you so 
that is such a cool thing and I absolutely like again it's not probably built for accessibility in mind, but I'm claiming it as such because it's just a really, really great feature. Now there is a lot in this game, but I would be remiss if I didn't touch on at least a little bit of the Academy for a minute. The Academy is something that I wish that every single multiplayer game would have. This is so robust. You can go in and try out the weapons. Every single weapon in the game, you can go in and try in three different tier levels. You can be able to shoot different bots that are either standing still or moving from one side of the screen to the other or being able to sort of dodge and duck out of the way as you're trying to be able to fire at them. And what's cool is that you can actually, there's like a little bit of a gamification in there where you try to be able to beat your top score and they give you stars based on how well well you do and that is not only a great way to be able to test out different weapons but it kind of allows you to sort of figure out your best strategy on how to be able to utilize that weapon and then on top of that you can be able to go into a bot arena where it literally is just you and a bunch of AI bots that you're going up against and you can try different weapons different strategies different items and you can be able to try out so many different things without having to go into a multiplayer match and learning by failing you can actually learn by practicing and then you can jump into a multiplayer match with the stuff that you've learned in the academy so that you can be able to hopefully be a better player this is such a huge thing for disabled players allowing a tutorial or a training mode in this can allow you to be able to go in at your own pace and try things out for the first time honestly i applaud 343 for adding the academy in here it is such a amazing 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 feature uh that i i absolutely love and adore now as as great as the accessibility is in halo infinite and has as much as i've enjoyed it there is one thing that is definitely missing um that would obviously help me but also help other players as well and that is in regards to aim assist or at least auto aim now i understand kind of the stance when it comes to that in a multiplayer setting players can take advantage of it it's seen as a cheat it could be uh it would prove obviously some balancing issues in in the game and i think that actually there is a place for it in uh, in a multiplayer setting. Um, I'm still trying to wrap my head around how to be able to do this uh, where it would work in sort of today's modern multiplayer. However, I am learning the best I can. Actually, there is a talk that a friend of mine, Tara Volker, um, who is actually the accessibility lead at uh, Xbox First Party Studios, she did a talk a couple years ago for GDC for when she worked on the game Evolve and how her and her team were able to retrofit accessibility into the multiplayer experience. It doesn't touch on specifically uh, the auto aim uh, as much as like kind of it sort of touches on accessibility on in multiplayer as a whole. But some of the principles actually still apply in this case and actually some of which are being used in Halo and in other multiplayer games today. Um, but I encourage you to be able to check that out. I'll leave a link to that talk in the description down below. Again, I'm still trying to be able to learn as much as I can on how to be able to make multiplayer more accessible. And I would really love to be able to see smarter people than I tackle this in a much sort of broader way in how to be able to make auto aim and aim assist as part of the multiplayer experience, but still make it like accessible for disabled players, but then also make it so that other players can be able to enjoy it and use it if they need to and still balance the game in a way that makes it uh, fair uh, and again, balanced for other players. Now, in the end, do I recommend Halo Infinite for accessibility? Honestly, yes, I do. Are there holes, are there gaps in the disability spectrums for certain disabilities? Yes. However, this is the first time that I felt like a Halo game was designed for me. Some of you may know, Halo has such a huge, huge place in my heart. I remember the very first time I ever played a Halo game, and that was with Halo Combat Evolved on my original Xbox, and it was the first game that I ever rolled credits on. And I've tried to be able to play Halo games since, and I've never been able to play it, especially in multiplayer. I avoided having to play a Halo multiplayer for years because it just didn't feel like that it was built for me. With Halo Infinite, I finally feel like this game was built for me. And that is such a huge thing. I've said it time and time again. If there are options in a game that it feels like it was designed for me, I will shout about it from the mountaintops. Well, I'm at the top of the mountain. I'm at the top of Halo and I'm screaming out loud, play this game.
the fact that this game is going to be on Game Pass day one, the fact that the multiplayer is going to be free to play even if you don't have Game Pass, this game is such a like a blast to play. This game is uh, so much fun and is really, really accessible. This is a great cornerstone that I think that with future updates from 343 Industries, this game could become the very first multiplayer game that is fully accessible. And I hope and I can't wait for that day to happen. And I think Halo has a chance to do it. So that is it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a like. I would really help me out. Uh, also as well, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can see more of my, uh, my videos and hit the bell notification too so you can be able to be notified when those videos come out. Thanks so much for watching. As always, I remain obediently yours. Bye.